Hello, my name is Kamarul Zaman, and I'll be presenting on module eight, which is the concluding module for this online training program. The focus of module eight is on transformative peace building towards a culture of peace in Southeast Asia. And we start by looking at what does it mean towards a culture of peace in Southeast Asia? Basically, it means a few things. It means that we must have sustainable positive peace. Sustainable positive peace is basically a combination of negative peace, which is basically an absence of war together with an absence of structural and cultural violence and the presence of justice, peace and development in our society. This is very important because sustainable positive peace you know, should be the end result of all the peace efforts that we are doing now and in the future. At the same time, there must be presence of proper procedures of conflict management because conflict is a reality of life and there will be conflicts in the future that will affect our society. So how we address this conflict situation is very important for us to ensure that we have a culture of peace in Southeast Asia. Thirdly, the implementation of a transformative peace building approach. This is something that I will expand on in a few minutes. Then we need to be able to learn about the issues, the processes and lessons that have been used to address conflicts in the past and to transform these conflict situations <clears throat> and to implement peace in the region. So this is something that we need to do, learn from the past in order to improve what we have now and in order to come up with a better you know, approach and framework for addressing conflicts in the future. And finally, we should have programs to expand the numbers of scholar practitioners and insider mediators and peace builders, not only in conflict areas, but in all uh, segment of our society. And this can be done through peace studies and peace education programs. This is why a focus on peace studies and peace education is crucial, is very important, you know, if you want to create a culture of peace in Southeast Asia. Basically, peace education is a holistic, multidisciplinary, and transformative process where one can learn to cultivate awareness, concern, and behaviors that lead to peaceful relationships, conditions, and structures. It is also an approach to transform and seek changes in people's mindsets, attitudes, and values, as well as behaviors that have either created or exacerbated violent conflicts. Peace education helps in breaking down social conditions that bring about structural and cultural violence. It has social and political purposes. It contributes to a culture of peace. It promotes tolerance, diversity, and empowerment, and encourages individual and social responsibility with the objective of creating more active agents of peaceful change. So how do we go about working on peace studies and peace education for the region. First, we need to understand what students should know and be aware of. What are the important things that we have to focus on? Basically, they need to understand the nature of conflict, how conflict begins, and the unmet needs that might give rise to the conflict, and the dynamics that has the potential to perpetuate the cycle of conflict. At the personal level, peace studies also contributes to the personal development of a person on how to deal with these emotions and, how, and what should be done in terms of improving skills, capacities, and competencies. These are things that can actually be learned and things that can be transferred, skills that can be transferred you know, to the students in order for them to have a better understanding of how to approach conflict situation. So peace studies can be summarized as a transformative process of enhancing the knowledge, the skills and attitude necessary to contribute to a culture of peace. Another thing that we need to do is to understand conflicts better because one of the reason why you know why there are so many conflicts in our society is that simply because we do not understand why the conflict happens 
or even if we understand, you know, we are not aware of what are the kind of things that might create a conflict situation and how they can escalate and how they can have an effect on our society. Conflicts can be understood not only by studying the definitions and the concepts, but by looking at it comprehensively from different perspectives, angles, contexts, and processes. And for this, for this, we actually need to understand how to do conflict mapping and analysis, which is an important part of peace studies and peace education. And in terms of understanding, we need to understand a few factors. One is actors, second is the content, the third is context, and the fourth is the process. Actors, understanding actors basically means that we need to understand who are the actors, the nature of the actors, and the structure of relationships between the actors and all the other parties that are involved. Understanding contents meaning we need to understand what are the issues that have given rise to these conflicts? What are the goals, incompatibilities that have given rise to the conflict situation? Understanding context will need us to look at what is the system and the subsystem, you know, they have given rise to this conflict because a conflict does not engage, does not actually, uh, it is not happening in isolation. It is part of a larger system. So we need to be able to understand what is this system and that has caused this conflict, you know, to happen and to further escalate. And lastly, understanding the process, meaning that we need to understand what are the triggers that have given rise to this conflict and how it has gone up and gone down and for us to learn the lessons from these things. Understanding conflict better also means that we need to understand the interplay between the factors that are involved in a conflict situation. Because as we know, any kind of negative behavior starts with a negative attitude. So what is the interplay between attitude and behavior, for example? And how can this then affect a conflict situation or the contradiction? So the ABC of conflict triangle is important for us in order to understand the interplay between the various factors involved in a conflict situation. By understanding this, will also prepare us to handle them in a much better way. Then lastly, we also need to understand that there are certain ways, you know, in order for us to approach a particular conflict situation. The, we need to also understand about the importance of contingency and complementarity in addressing conflict situation. Contingency basically means that we need to be aware of the levels of the conflict, of the issues of the conflict, as I mentioned before, and to be ready for any kind of possibilities. So our action is contingent upon all these factors. So contingency is very important. Complementarity basically means that there are different actors that are involved in addressing conflict situation. How do we work with the other actors in order for us to keep, to, to complement the work that we are all doing in order to promote peace in that conflict situation. When we talk about creating a peaceful uh, region and a culture of peace, we need to reflect on what we have now. At the same time, you know, we need to look at how we can improve upon what we have. We do have regional mechanisms, for example, to address threats to security, both conventional or traditional, as well as non-conventional or non-traditional, including threats to human security. For example, in the region, we have the ASEAN way of conflict management, which is basically a consensus and consensus seeking approach. The ASEAN way has a three R approach, basically meaning that there are three R's that can explain you know, the ASEAN approach. One is restraint, second one is responsibility, and the third one is respect that must be there for each other, uh, respect for each other in order to uphold the earlier responsibility and to restrain oneself. Unfortunately, you know, this ASEAN way is basically valid for interstate inter levels of conflict, not the intrastate 
conflicts because there are many situations that need to be addressed but cannot be addressed in the ASEAN way. So it's only useful for interstate and not interstate. And at the same time, most of the conflicts we have in the region are actually of the inter interstate nature. So we need to reflect on what we have and then to find ways in order to address interstate conflicts. And for this, we believe that transformative peace building is useful. Transformative peace building basically is a combination of conflict transformation and peace building. Conflict transformation is a process of engaging with and transforming the relationships, interests, discourses, and structures within society that support the continuation of violent behavior. Peace building, on the other hand, is a long-term process that works for change of the violent structure of the relationship between affected parties and of the mindsets and attitudes of those involved. It, it works to dismantle actually structural and cultural violence. And then for peace building, we need also contributions for all sectors in the long-term process of peace building or complementarity as I discussed earlier. The honors and bulk of the efforts must always come from within, from the soil of the conflict. This is why we say that peace building and eventually transformative peace building is something that is a bottom up process. It doesn't work top down, it's a bottom up process. So to create a culture of peace in the region, we need to include and expand transformative peace building processes in the present peace efforts in the region. Some lessons that we can learn you know, from the various peace processes in the region you know, include the, the need to have sincerity and willingness of the parties you know, to resolve and engage peacefully. And then a process needs to be a national process. It has to be something that is actually all over the country instead of just in the localized conflict areas. It should be inclusive, meaning all the actors and sectors must be involved. A peace process is also organic and cumulative, and they require deals. Uh, they are not only a, a, a situation where people come with positions that they will not compromise upon. Peace and justice go together, you know, as 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 you know, as part of the process. And and a peace process does not end with a peace accord, which is why implementing a peace process is very very important because we do not want the process, you know, to fail. So it has to be implemented in the proper way. And lastly, transformative peace building is necessary because we need to be able to work at it from different levels at all the phases. So if we do something, it has to be focusing on what is the most important thing at that particular time, whether it is now or in the intermediate phase or in the long term. And this is part of transformative peace building. So if we have all these things, and as we have learned from the lessons, you know, from some of the cases in the region, uh, possibly we can have a culture of peace in the region. So that's all for this module. Thank you very much for listening and take care.